Hello, ideal friends. Greetings from Madison, Wisconsin. Years ago, some of my wonderful colleagues at UW-Madison created a series of web-based research assignments. Students are given prompts, and they research a topic using both general and scholarly sources. They compare and contrast what they learn from each source and reflect on them. In this video's description below, you can find a link to a presentation that shares that assignment and offers ideas on how you can adapt them. As students go through this assignment, uh, these assignments, there are two recurring questions. Are these sources reliable, and how do you know? The point is to get students to stop and think, and for faculty to see students' thought processes on determining the reliability of sources. This can spark some great discussion between students and faculty on the credibility of sources. But... What if you'd like to include more guidance and direction when students begin considering the reliability of their sources? Or, what if you'd like to present something to your whole class at once proactively and not just in response to students one-on-one? -on -one? How do you know? One commonly used tool is called the CRAP test, created by Sarah Blakesley of the University of California at Chico. It's an acronym for students to determine the currency, relevance, authority, accuracy, and purpose of a resource. Sometimes it's pronounced CRAP, other times CROP. Do you want to avoid uh, including the term CRAP in your assignment? Well, sometimes the letters can be rearranged and you can have a CARP test or a PARCA test. Currency is another way of saying, how old is this information? Is the information new or is it outdated? If it's really old, is it perhaps a primary source or is there um, some historical importance to it? Relevance can help students consider whether or not the information in the source uh, connects with the student's topic or thesis, and students can also consider the target audience. For example, um, is it a general audience or a scholarly audience? Now, something I'd like to add based on my own experience. I teach uh, Appreciation in History of Music. It's a general degree requirement, and most of my students are not music majors. As they use Google Scholar, they'll sometimes find something that would be great for an upper level or graduate course, but it may be a little too specific or narrow in focus for where they're at. It's good to remember um, when the general source is going to be very helpful, and when the scholarly source might be more appropriate. Authority, uh, it examines the source of the information. I think this is especially helpful to more fully consider with online sources. If the source is something like a book or journal, the authors, the publishers, and the credentials are often um, very prominent to find in the book. But that's less of a given with something like a website or a YouTube video. If you're using a web source and you can't find an author, that's not a good sign for academic research. Uh, regardless, it's important to note how the credentials of the author fit with the subject matter. For example, I am a doctor of musical arts. I can give good music info, but um, first off, I'm just one person, and uh, definitely look up someone who's not just Rich Frazee. Um, you know, get see what other people are saying. Second, I may be a doctor, but I have a field of study that is not all-encompassing. I might mention how trends in history of the arts uh, generally tie into music, but I'm not a historian, and I'm certainly not someone who's an authority on anything medical or scientific. Students, again, should um, try to gauge what the credentials of the author are and what their, what their strengths are. Now to accuracy. As students consider accuracy, they can compare and contrast what they find with other sources. They can also consider what evidence has been provided or if there's any kind of peer review. Finally, with purpose. Students can try to determine why this resource exists. Is it looking to teach or persuade or sell something? And also just something to try to determine and engage. Is there a bias of some kind? So, how might you apply this in your course? I'm a big fan of scaffolding major assessments. 
It takes something that's scary and daunting and chunks it into tasks, smaller tasks, that build on one another. Maybe you have a research paper in your course. As you scaffold that assessment from, let's say, a list of initial research ideas to that finished paper, you could have students create an annotated bibliography where students evaluate the sources they found and explain how those sources connect to their paper. As part of that process, have them apply the crap test. Have students write about the currency, the relevance, authority, accuracy, and purpose of the sources that they found. Taking this a step further, I have included a link in this video description to Benedictine University's library, which offers ways to apply this, the crap test, to different media. For a book, you could pay attention to how well the content is organized and some impressions of the, the bibliography or the quality of the diagrams or key illustrations. If it's a journal article, how was access to that journal obtained? Is the journal article expressing an opinion? Is it summarizing research trends? Is it providing evidence to support a hypothesis? Um, if it's a website, again, is the author listed? Um, what kind of advertisements are we seeing? So, we've talked about examining the currency, relevance, authority, accuracy, and purpose of a resource. We can have students do this in an assessment, like an annotated bibliography. We can think about how to apply these ideas to different types of sources, like a book versus a website. How else might we evaluate sources? Mike Caulfield of Washington State University, Vancouver, has another method. SIFT. This acronym stands for Stop, Investigate, Find, and Trace. We'll discuss each of these along with practical applications. It's especially useful for evaluating news or what you might find on social media, and you can also use these ideas for research. Stop. This is pretty you know, self-explanatory. Let's use a real-world example. Let's say you're on social media and you see something that catches your eye. Maybe you want to share it. Stop. Don't immediately do that. First, ask yourself, what do you know about this source? If it's unfamiliar, first see what you can find out. Which leads us to investigate. Investigate the source. The here, um, general um, tools, general research tools can actually come in really handy. Use Google. Use Wikipedia. At this point, we're just kind of getting a first impression and we're not relying on what the resource says about itself. We're instead seeing what are others saying about this source. Next is find. Find better coverage. Can you find this information in a more trusted source? Again, if this is part of a research uh, project, can you find the same information in one of your uh, library's trusted databases? And then finally, trace. Trace claims, quotes, and medias, media to the original context. Um, again, kind of a real-world application in your day-to-day -day life. You might find something in, in your news feed of a website that's re-reporting a news organization. And oftentimes, you'll find a link to that original news source. Go there. Find the original source. If you're a student, um, if your student is uh, starting their research on Wikipedia, which, again, can be a wonderful place to start an inquiry. Um, see what the art Wikipedia article cited. Go to the bib, find the bibliography of Wikipedia and see what those sources, see what Wikipedia cited, see what those sources are saying. As before, you can have students write out step-by-step -step how they're evaluating info with SIFT. Direct them to stop when they initially find something. It might work for research, but it might not. Again, have them gauge what others think about the source. Check on, check on it with respected uh, sources. Um, and again, as a faculty member or a structural designer, um, you can share your own favorite sources and databases with your students. You know, see what's being quoted. I like to think of it this way. Um, if you have a, a favorite band, this is something I tell my music students, if you have a favorite band and you're looking for more great music to explore, Check out your favorite band's favorite bands. Um, so, you know, see who their inspirations were. Similarly, if you're doing research and something is being quoted that seems interesting, or if you find a, um, 
you know, something that's being referenced that's helpful, find that source that's being quoted. Find that source that's being referenced. Now, again, if students are overwhelmed with the research process, remember, the bibliography might list page numbers or an index might help. And if it's an online source, well, Control F is an amazingly powerful tool to get straight to what was quoted and find its context. The CRAAP test and SIFT. These are powerful tools to help determine how do you know. You might be using it in the context of an academic assignment, but these are powerful life skills that can help your students sift out information from misinformation for really the rest of their lives. So something to consider, what are some of your favorite assessments or tools to help students research or evaluate their sources? Join the discussion on the IDEA LinkedIn page. There's a link in the description below, and I'd also love to connect with you. Happy lifelong learning, everybody.